Hi everyone, I'm happy to report that version 2 for Afterglow is now available, so we're going to take a look at the new features. I'm going to talk about the changes that have been made because there have been some quite wide-reaching design changes, especially in regards to like the asset browser, so I think you're going to like it. But I will say, even though it's available now, what you're going to be seeing on the screen is prior to some cleanup, because I'm actually recording it before it's released. That's YouTube movie magic for you. So if you're new here, Afterglow is my asset library for Blender, available on Gumroad and Superhive, which provides a comprehensive suite of lighting template tools. Now these are not traditional lighting tools, because individual collection assets like the studio environments down here have an extreme amount of customization and power to them. I have previously done a crash course video that's over an hour long, I think, Kind of scratching the surface of what you can do with them. It's all about physical diegetic lighting, meaning that the light sources in Afterglow come from physical meshes. So this is emission data that's projected by the shader, as well as having highly customizable actual studio environments where we can kind of dynamically shift and adapt the lighting with any kind of nodes that you like, including lighting textures. For example, I could drag one of these ceiling light groups into the shader editor, plug in the vector, plug that into the emission, and then it changes the profile in the scene. If I zoom into the sphere here you can see that reflected so it's all like physically reactive as well as those types of environments there's also now what i call product platforms which are product visualization templates that can either stand on their own or inside of any of the studio environments and it's all compatible so you can basically like hot swap things and experiment with different lighting templates so i'll show you that so if I just clean the scene, so we've got nothing going on, maybe I'll grab product platform free, drag that into the scene, and I'm just going to center it on the world. So the world centered position is carefully designed for these product platforms. Since I'm in the afterglow file, I'm actually going to just quickly delete it and activate the actual collection. Okay, so when you unpack a product platform collection asset into your scene. It will have a variety of pre-established camera positions, a focal point for the camera in case you want to use depth of field. Let me go into one like this. You've got the demo spheres and some light objects. Now these light objects are invisible by default. If I go into the viewport here, I can actually see the highlight of them. The visibility can be toggled under the object properties under revisibility and camera. So you see there. The strength of the light can be modified in the shader nodes with it selected under the emission strength value. So what this does is it already lets it act as a functional lighting template. I can move those light objects around and even rotate it and we can get kind of different effects going there. But like I said, if I then added a studio environment, say let's do six, then without intruding on the product lighting template, it adds a new context. There's no overlapping. There's no kind of conflict. We just add the physical studio environment. It complements it. Maybe I'll do like a little bit of density in the volume just to fade out any potential background there. And what I love about this, the reactive nature of it, is if I then grab the actual studio floor that's got this lighting pattern going across it, go back to the camera and then drag the emission color ramp. What it's doing is it's changing the lighting profile of that floor. So now we get light bleeding up into the product template cage. And I love how it kind of bounces through there. So we can get some super clean lighting results by being careful with this. Just to highlight the interchangeability, if I disable Studio 6, again, we still have the product template lighting there. Enable Studio 1, we get a different lighting profile. You see, we get all these kind of light lines here because this studio has a ceiling grid with a more detailed LED type panel, and it's got a light texture with a reducing gradient of boxes along the top there. So the different studio environments, you may know this if you've already watched some of the article of content, are structurally unique in slightly different ways. So for example, the first studio environment has an LED panel with details like studs between the panel boxes. Studio two has the panel, but without the details. Studio three has the panel, but like no grid. So it's all just one light, which is very clean. Studio four has a side light ball. I've just got a test object on that at the moment, but I could swap that out for something like this. And you see, you get some like very strong looking things there. If I disable the light rings to rely on that, again, for a bit of density in there, dark and moody, but let's not get carried away. Studio five is starting to bring it to the floor. So you see, we've got the floor gradient. Studio Studio 6 is the floor, but with the grid panel again, which is a nice detail. And Studio 7 is a different one. It's a larger one with a gradiated geometry for the wall, a wider space, generally the more realistic one, I would say. I tend to use this one as my default environment whenever I'm starting with something. And with the product template in here, 
you can see what it looks like. So there are different product platforms. There's five defaults in total with different levels of complexity. So we've got very basic ones. You'll notice there's a style I've done with a kind of glass one and a more opaque sphere that kind of just represent where you might place things. Again, these aren't all necessarily meant to be your final result. What I've done with all of my templates that I make for this product is I've given you starting points where you might consider new things and new modifications. I quite like product platform two. So we can go a couple of angles on that. Quite a strong one looking up. The materials, there's a kind of faintly varied roughness material on the platforms by default. But again, everything is available for you to control and modify however you like. So I've just made sure that that roughness is plugged in now. I've increased it with this mix node. I made the material darker so you can see how that looks. Going forward in the future, I would quite like to do some material variations to make stuff like this a bit easier because it'd be nice to have like velvety type things. So again, we're looking at a different product platform. I can always just swap back out to a different environment and play around with the power of that. Now it's easy for me to swap out in this. This is the actual Afterglow file. What you will download is an asset library. So it's a zip file containing the Afterglow folder. Inside of that folder is the blend file and there should be text files which describe the categories. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to extract the folder from the zip file anywhere on your computer, then go to edit, preferences, file paths down to the asset library section, press the plus button and you want to point it to that folder. It's going to look a bit different to what I've got here because I'm working in my development environment. But the point is Blender needs to be able to see the folder where that blend file is and the text files because the text files describe the categories. And you'd want to keep the categories in the asset browser because I've pre-organized everything for you. So you can selectively just use the studio environments or the other types of content in the scene, product platforms, etc. You may have also noticed while I've been speaking that there have been changes to things like the material thumbnails. The materials have been made a bit clearer. So they have less obscure names. They had quite obscure names to start with because I was experimenting with the first version. I've created a material sphere to make it look nice. And I did a recent video asking people whether they preferred like cropped thumbnails or full sphere thumbnails. And it was a completely mixed response, entirely personal preference. At one point I had them all cropped and I was quite happy with it. But then there was just like, I don't know, a 10% extra satisfaction in having a, a full sphere, especially when I modeled this one, I was like, it looks nice. So I've rendered them as full spheres for now with some transparency so it looks all nice and professional and that makes it fit in quite easily with whatever theme you're using having the transparency so other things the studio cage thumbnails have also been re-rendered so the studio cages are more concentrated templates so rather than having an entire studio environment if you just have like one focus object you want to light then a studio cage is a useful thing for you to use again you just drag it in center on the world or if you have my modular workspaces add-on any collection asset you drag in to the scene, you can press unpack and it will do everything automatically. Center it, unpack it, organize it into collections. That doesn't come with Afterglow. It's another product of mine, super handy. It can even do things like splitting up the interface with hotkeys and stuff like that. This is not a video about modular workspaces, but it really does help to speed up the unpacking process for things like these collection assets, right? Which are exactly what it sounds like, collections with multiple objects in them. So the thumbnails have been updated. So instead of just text, you can actually visually see the type of lighting and and the reflection pattern on a sphere in the asset thumbnails, which is just way more useful. So I can see Studio Cage 6. So if I drag that into the scene, it'd be right there. And then I can get working with it right away. So say I have my scan of the fossil object I've used recently. With no effort whatsoever, it's already lit in a way that we know is nicely balanced. And on that matter, the light values for these Studio Cages have been rebalanced because they were a little bit too bright in a lot of cases before. They were meant to be adapted, but what I did was I basically darkened a lot of them to try and make them a bit more generalized use case without requiring as many changes. On that matter, character cages have also been updated. So these ones are typically more stylized. Let me go into the camera. So these are less for like full professional focus product things. They're more if you have a character, you want to do something a bit fun with it. You just want to throw it into a, a scene and maybe like grab a few like, you know, quick renders from a certain angle or whatever. This will help you do that quickly. You get some nice soft lighting there. So they've also been reduced a bit and some of the extra detail elements have been removed to make it a bit more or a bit less stylized. Stylized. All right, there's even more to get through. So let's go back to Studio 7. I'm just going to park my camera in the corner so we can have a look at this. You will notice that the light pattern assets have also had new thumbnails made. So instead of just being basic images, white on black, showing the pattern, these are now rendered thumbnails. So you can actually see a little bit of what it looks like in the scene.
scene and if you look carefully at the corners you actually see some of the studio environment there so it gives you an idea for the amount of light that is projected by it while fitting in as much of the pattern as possible now it may be confusing to newcomers to blender you might think hey just drag that into the scene and then it'll be there that's not how it works exactly these are node groups as indicated by the group icon in the bottom left of the icon so if i click on the light source which in this case is the ceiling let me just fix my interface. I'm in the Studio 7 mapped ceiling light material. That's the actual light. There is a glass layer as well, but we just want the light. It looks a bit messy on the screen here. Basically, all of these ramps are connected to different behavioral types. So we've got like linear gradients, which I can plug in and modify. And everything looks great, by the way. If I, whoops, wrong, uh, wrong collection. If I put in a floating sphere here, I like to use this as like a test object to look at while I'm modifying the lights. So that's the top gradient. Second one is just a line that I modified earlier on in the video. The next section is for kind of circular gradients. So these are center based and you can do whatever you like with those and then we've got decal lights which are decal textures which with the mapping you can change the location of and then the final section is the one by two ceiling images now that's what's represented here so we see in the collections or the categories we have one by one light patterns that's a decal as indicated here one by one brush we have one by two light patterns which is here so if you imagine that the studio ceiling is one by two so one width two lengthways it will cover the entire thing 32 by three light patterns are for the side wall in studio let me just double check four yep so studio four you can imagine it being really long so that's 32 by three but in studio seven where we are the ceiling is again a one by two ratio so we're going to focus on that by default there will probably be this node group called leafy plugged in because i like this one let me clean things up a little bit just to make it less confusing so we have the principled output under the emission section we have the color and the strength i have a few nodes floating around the halt tint is a certain light blue that i like using instead of white completely optional and the leafy node group is plugged into the color but you'll notice and this is important the leafy node group has a vector input and that's provided by this flip direction node here quite easy to miss because it doesn't say hey this is the vector input for the node group but you just want to keep that in mind that it's a flip direction so basically if i choose one by two light patterns and if i pick one from the list here let's say doodles i can drag that into the shader editor sometimes it's a bit of a bug with blender where it has the you see that icon over the cursor where it says it can't drag this here sometimes that appears when you're hovering over the shader editor even though it does let you put it there just one thing to note so now that's in here it's quite obvious how to swap it out literally just plug in the color from the flip direction to the vector and then of course the color from the doodles to the color of the emission and then ta-da we have a different light pattern and it's being reflected on our object so you can swap that out for anything you like we have a bunch of new light patterns this time so there are some really cool ones and some really subtle ones so triangles small if i plug that in this is more of a reflection type light pattern because if i get up close to the sphere you can see what it's doing here with all these triangle reflections so i found some really interesting combinations that i posted on social media of putting all of this together let me show you something because this is where the power of layering up these different presets in afterglow really comes into full force so if i bring product platform one into the scene first of all with that darker platform look how good that is we have studio seven already active because i didn't disable it and we've got the triangle light pattern we just put on and look at that hang on let's zoom in a bit here with the opaque and the transparent resolving this is a really clean shot the soft lighting the semi roughness of the platform there a little bit of blur we don't even have depth of field active on this technically but i can activate it if you want as well and then we can grab the depth of field marker here bring it forward so this is the kind of power i like to see we've jumped between lots of different types of presets and you've seen the visual variety there this is far more powerful than just hdris it's a huge shortcut than just making your own kind of physical lighting setup from scratch and again because we're not using just lamp objects the entire point of this product is physical diegetic shader mesh based lighting we can get these complex structures like these outline geometries and these rings that aren't just illusions they are actually providing the light 
and the real reflections. That is something you can't do with lamp objects and it'd be ridiculously ineffective to do with light nodes. So there's lots of possibilities for things to do going forward. I still haven't even started experimenting with using geometry nodes to build kind of lighting structures. And I've got lots of plans going forward as well. So anyone that has this product will get future updates for free as well. Although as with some of my previous projects, sometimes there are offshoots from one product that become a new product if it's different enough in terms of genre and it becomes its own thing. There are probably new things that I've forgotten to mention so far. Thumbnails for the replaceable objects have been updated. One or two have been removed that were redundant. Uh, for the materials, extra details have been added by default, like micro details to make them more interesting to look at, etc. And just to clarify, if you want to recreate this, this is product platform one, camera PP1 one, studio seven, with the triangles small light texture on the studio environment. If you want more light coming through, then there is a triangles small with solid option, which is specifically designed to punch more light through the ceiling by having more solid geometries in amongst those triangles. Again, because it's all node-based, everything can be recolored. So I've got a color shift node here and I can change that to something like red. I can get quite moody. I'm going to plug the small triangles back in instead because I like the subtle highlight of it. Actually, maybe I'll put that as blue to make it a bit more Tron-like. Bit of a dark blue there. Cool highlight. Maybe I'll swap it out for a different one, like straight lines random. Plug in that vector. Plug that into the color shift. And now we're getting these lines instead. So what I will do is I will put a sale on to celebrate the new update but only for one week. I should also remind you that Afterglow is governed by the studio-friendly license. So there's free tiers. Most people are just gonna use the independent tier. That's basically if you're self-employed, you're using this to do whatever you want, commercial or non-commercial, client projects, fine. You only need to pay once. You can use the product for whatever you like. You just can't redistribute it. Then there's studio license. So basically if you're a company working with clients, you do need to buy the product for every project, which seems fair, because I'm gonna be using this for my own work as well. What you're doing by purchasing this this product for your client projects as a company is you're effectively hiring me in a little way by making that purchase. The license is designed to kind of assist with that fairness. But then there's also the Studio Unlimited license, which is roughly equivalent to a studio purchasing the studio license about three times. So if you know you're going to use it more than three times, it's more cost effective just to buy the Unlimited. Since it'll be on sale for 20% off for one week, now is the time to get it. And if you are a company that's considering getting a studio or Studio Unlimited license, now would be the time to bank that. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description and in the pinned comment so you can go and pick it up on either Gumroad or Superhive. And if you made it this far through the video, feel free to put a light bulb related emoji in the comments so I can see if you did make it this far. So thanks for watching everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.